Hi everybody, this is the Algebra 2 video on section, this is actually section 3.1.3, which is solving equations using equivalent expressions. What we're going to do is we are going to use certain methods to solve a bunch of equations, um, but one of the things we are going to do is, there's going to be one specific method we'll use, but what we're going to do is for problems like the first one, we're going to try to make it into a more manageable problem, making it into one side of an equivalent expression. So, if I have something like 100x squared minus 100x, minus 600 equals zero. What could I do to make this simpler? So just like when we were um, doing systems of equations, we should be able to make this simpler by multiplying or dividing everything by a number so that it becomes simpler. Well, I see all these zeros, and if I would divide everything by 100, 100 divided by 100, this would be x squared, and this would be minus an x, and that would be minus six. And that equals zero. So then the question is, how do I solve this? Well, I could solve it by factoring. So I'm going to factor this. x squared is an x and an x. The factors of 6 that add or subtract to negative 1 would be 3 and 2 minus 3 plus 2. That equals zero, right? So then if I'm going to solve this equation using the zero product property, something times something else should equal zero. This is back from algebra. So either x plus 2 equals zero or x minus 3 equals 0. Well, I'd subtract 2. x could equal negative 2, or I could add 3. x could equal 3. So what that means, you guys, is I can put negative 2 in for x in both of these, and it should be equal to 0. So let's do a quick check. And I won't do this for all of them. I'll just do this for this. All right, so it's going to be 100 times negative 2 squared minus 100 times a negative 2 minus 600. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 100 is 400. Uh, negative 100 times negative 2 would give me, what, uh, plus 200? And that's minus 600. 400 plus um, 200 is 600. Minus is 600, that equals 0, and that checks. Now, putting 3 in there, we would take 100 times 3, square that, minus 100 times 3, minus 600. Okay, 3 squared is 9. 9 times 100 is 900. 3 times 100 is... One, or 300, but that's going to be minus 300, and then I got minus 600. 900 minus 300 is 600, minus that 600, that equals 0, and that checks. All right, so that is my first problem. Um, my second one, what if I have 25x squared plus 25 equals, 25x, I'm sorry, equals 750. So I want to make that into a simpler easier problem. Well, I'm looking at all of these and it looks like I could divide out 25 from all these terms. 25x squared divided by 25 is an x squared. Um, 25x divided by 25 is plus x and that's going to equal 750 divided by 25. It's kind of early for this. It's 30. All right guys, so for this one, um, I'm going to try to factor it, but in order to use the zero product property, I have to set this equal to zero. So let's subtract 300, x squared plus x minus 300 equals, or I'm sorry, minus, I think it's 30, my bad, I put too many zeros in there. Sorry about that, it's just 30. This is minus 30, and that's 30. All right, so factors of 30 that add or subtract to well, 1 would be, 6 and 5, plus 6 minus 5. So either x minus 5 equals 0, or x plus 6 equals 0. For minus 5, we'd add 5. x would equal 5. And for this one, we'd subtract 6. x equals negative 6. Um, when you get it factored, if you want to, you can just leave it. You do not need to, um, you don't have to do all the equal 0 thing if you can do the math in your head. All right, that brings me up to my third problem. And I'm only going to do four in this video. Oh, this was fun. 168x squared minus 154x equals 245. All right, so here we go. <coughs> and this looks like almost like a plus 54. It should be minus 154. All right, so what I have to do is I want to make this into something easier. This looks like really super nasty. All right. So two is not going to go into all those. So nothing even goes into all those because it ends in a five. Five doesn't go in any of these because, well, five does not um, go into an eight or the four. 
Um, three, let's see here. Three does not go in all of them because four plus two is six. Six plus three, five is 11. This is 11. And one of the tricks is add all the digits. If the sum of the digits is divisible by three, then the thing is divisible by three. Well, this guy here is eight plus five, 13. 13 is not divisible by three, so three does not work. We said five did not work. Let's try seven. Okay, 168 divided by seven. That's 24. Um, 154 divided by 7. That's 22. 245 divided by 7. That's 35. All right, guys, let's divide everything by 7. All right, so like I said, 168 divided by 7. This is 24x squared. 154 divided by 7. This is minus 22x. And that's going to equal 245 divided by 7 was 35. All right, let's subtract 35. So I'm going to have 24x squared minus 22x minus 35, and that equals 0. All right, and I know I can't get that down anymore because nothing goes into 22 other than 2 and 11, and 2 or 11 does not go into both of those. So 2 goes in here but not in here, um, and 11 doesn't go into anything. All right, so let's factor this. Uh, if This one is actually more complicated. You could do the box and diamond from algebra. Um, but I'm not going to. I'm going to give this a shot. Let's make this a 6x and a 4x. 35 is probably going to be 7 and 5. So let's go 7 here and 5 here. The outside and inside here, guys, is going to be negative 22x. The signs have to be different. It's negative 35. On the outside, I have a 42x. On the inside, I have a 20x. Oh, it looks like I got lucky. 42 minus 20 is negative 22. I feel great about that. So this is negative, and this would be positive, and that equals 0. This one you might want to set equal to 0. 6x minus 5 equals 0. So we'd add 5 and divide by 6. So x would be 5 6. And here, 4x plus 7 could equal 0. So let's subtract 7. Equals 4x equals negative 7. And divide by 4. So my answer would be x equals 5 6 and negative 7 fourths. So I'm feeling good about that, which is good. All right, so that's that one. All right, number four. Last but not least, oh, this is a nice, nasty one. 324x squared equals negative 27x plus 945. All right, oh my gosh, this is going to be crazy. Okay, so let's see here. Um, I want to divide something out of all of these, and I'm not feeling really good about even numbers, so they're all out. Um, three goes in here. Does three go in here? Nine and, yeah, three goes in there. Five, and three does go in there. So three goes in here. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Now, 27 is the biggest number I have. So what I would do is I'd take 324 and divide it by 27, because I want to see if it's the biggest one. Oh, 324 does go evenly into 27. Uh, four, 945 divided by 27, that's 35. So let's divide everything by 27. Now, you might be like, what if I don't figure out the 27, Miss Henschel? Well, you could have taken out the 3 and kept dividing things out if you wanted to. I'm a big fan of getting the biggest one out. So 324 divided by 27 was 12. So this is going to be 12x squared. That's going to equal uh, negative x. And then four, or 945 divided by 27 was plus 35. All right, I need to set this thing equal to 0 so I can use the 0 product property. So I'm going to add an x, and I'm going to subtract 35. So putting this in the correct order, 12x squared plus an x minus 35, that equals 0. Again, I want to try to factor this thing. Um, 12x squared, let's go with a 3x and a 4x. 35 is probably going to be 7 and 5. The outside and inside, you guys, has to be an x, and the signs are going to be different since it's negative 35. On the outside, I have a 21x. On the inside, I have a 20x. Oh, I got lucky again. Um, can a 21x and a 20x be an x with different signs? Yep, minus 20. So minus 20 would come here. This would be plus 21. So 3x minus 5 equals 0, or 4x plus 7 equals 0. Here I'd add 5. Divide by 3. X is 5 thirds. And here I'm subtracting 7. And 
those are my answers. So x is going to equal 5 thirds or negative 7 fourths. So I'm feeling good about that. All right. So I know that this is a pretty short video. Um, you have factored, solved and factored um, in Algebra 1. So the only thing is we're just changing this so that it's an easier, um, it's an easier problem to solve. Okay. Good luck.